The B cell response is basically triggered by either an allergen or an antigen. And a drug that's immunogenic is perceived as an antigen by the B cell that basically will be identified through the B cell receptors. The B cell then will internalize and metabolize that antigen and present the specific T cell epitope of that antigen to the T cell, differentiating it into a Th2 with production of interleukin-4, which is critical for the B cell differentiation maturation into plasma cell, which is the responsible cell that produces the antibodies, IgG, IgM, IgE, and all of these are now antibodies that identify and recognize the original danger signal, either the allergen, the drug that's immunogenic, or another type of antigen. This particular engagement with the T cell will also produce mature B cells into memory cells that are also specific for that particular danger signal. So for the primary and secondary B cell responses, I'm going to show this cartoon that's taken from Abbas Lickman and Pillai. I recommend highly their publications and also if you have a chance go and attend one of their multiple available classes and seminars and workshops. So what happens is a first exposure that could be to an allergen, an antigen, or a drug that's immunogenic. The naive B cell is now going to identify the danger signal, and this will make the B cell activated into an activated B cell with the appropriate co-stimulation from the T cells. These activated B cells will become plasma cells. This is something that occurs anywhere between five and 15 days after the exposure. Then we have measurable titers of antibodies to the allergen or to the drug that's immunogenic. And they're mainly IgM, although there might be a little bit of IgG in that original mix. Over time, the levels of these antibodies go down and they're basically sustained by long-lived plasma cells in the bone marrow and the production of memory B cells. These are cells that learned about the first exposure to danger and they're specialized to react to it. Not all the primary exposures will produce memory. Some of these remain as primary antibody responses with a relatively quick production of antibodies and then eventually disappearance. However, when the memory B cell has been differentiated after this first exposure, on a repeat exposure, these B cells now can be activated, differentiate and produce plasma cells that will increase the titers of the antibodies significantly, but also pay attention, it's very quick. The immune system has learned that the danger was a danger signal for which it produced memory cells because it was important. So this could be happening when you have a patient that has reacted to a particular drug that's immunogenic. You have to make sure that you follow up that patient very quickly after the second time you inject the patient if there was any questions about potentially having a, a, a B cell response to the drug. Of course, this happens very commonly with allergies. We all know about peanut allergies or any kind of allergic reaction, bee stings, etc. that the second exposure or the repeat exposure is more dramatic in the sense of the levels of antibody that are circulating and faster when that second exposure occurs. These are gonna be mainly now IgG, no more of the IgM type. And eventually with time, the long-lived plasma cells and the memory B cells are going to remain in the system with a slightly higher baseline production of antibodies that are very specific to this danger signal. 
So when you are evaluating immunogenicity to a drug, it is important that if you are going to get anti-drug antibodies, you understand when is the time for the sample collection. If, for instance, on a repeat exposure, after you inject the patient or after you give the patient the injection to give it at home, you bring the patient back 10 or 15 days after that second exposure, you could be missing at the titer booster. You might be fooled and thinking that the levels of antibodies are not changed compared to the first exposure. This is important because usually for primary responses that do not mature with memory, could be managed in the clinic with pre-medication and they don't have any long-term consequences. If you do, on the other hand, have a secondary antibody response, it is recommended that you do not repeat that drug for the patient or you probably have to manage the patient. If it's going to be injections at home with an EpiPen, be ready that they are ready to manage with uh, steroids, pre-medication with steroids or antihistaminics, depending on the degree of the response that you're expecting. If possible, changing the drug would be a good idea. I recommend these references and also if you want to subscribe for my, in my YouTube channel, please do so. I have several playlists and several topics that relate to immunogenicity, immune system, cytokine signaling, and more. Thank you very much.